what we're looking at here is typically when you attack a building, all right, we're going to try to use existing openings that are already that are already in the building for our entry points, all right. Rather than breaching, breaking, and making our own, if we have one that is viable, we're going to try to use that opening, all right. And what we're going to do is we're going to shore these openings to make sure it's safety for our egress and our ingress, okay. Now there's two different methods we're going to talk about today, all right. The method that you see here is what we call a build-in place method, all right. Where we're going to use this is if we can, we want to build this door or window shore, but we don't have the ability to do our pre-builds, all right? We have some confined space. We have a small area where we can't get a large shore in through that area. We're going to have to bring it in in pieces and parts and actually build it in place. Now, what you see back there at the door is what we call a pre-build method or the Ohio method, all right? That method, everything is going to basically be built in a safe area, brought into the affected area, placed in the door opening, and then pressurized with wedges. All right. Now both of these shores are interchangeable. All right. You can do a build in place or a pre-build for a window. You can do a build in place or a pre-build for a door. <coughs> so don't uh, get in your head that you have to do a build in place for a window and that you have to do a pre-build for a door. You can do it on either one. All right. In my opinion, I will try to always do a pre-build before I'll do a build in place. So if you have the ability to get that shore through your collapse area and get it in the opening if you're trying to, 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 to uh, shore up, I personally will always try to do a pre-build. It is quicker, it is easier, you can make sure it is square, everything's done in a safe area, you bring it in, you wedge it in place, you pressurize it, it's ready to go. But if not, we are going to do a build in place. <clears throat> when we start looking at our window opening, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> alright, remember we always put square shores in skewed opening. So if this thing was kind of laid over a little bit in this fashion, all right, we are going to take our measurements, we're going to take our shortest measurements, and we are going to put a square shore in the skewed opening, and then we are going to take up the void spaces with wedge packs. Follow me? Because if you look at your double funnel theory, we need to take that load path and transfer it straight down. If we were to build an angled shore in an angled opening, when that load path comes down, it's going to take our shore and it's just going to lay it over. All right? So always make sure you're building square shores in unsquare openings. All right? So what that tells me is if you need, basically, if you have 36 inches of run, which is basically what we have here, the minimum piece of timber that you can use as a 4x4, four four, all right? You can go up to 48 inches with a 4x4 four four as your header and soles. If you get larger, that now jumps up to a 6x6, six six, okay? So if you have a 6-foot door, you can do a 6x6. Six six. Anything longer than 6 feet, like say a garage door, you no longer build a door shore, you're going to have to build like 3 or 4 post verticals, okay?